Hello, and thank you for joining us today for our discussion of My Life in Him, our devotional book at the Red Bank Church of Christ in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I'm Steve Lusk with the Red Bank Church, and joining me today is Tommy Stone, our preaching minister, and Blake Hayes, our youth minister. And we just want to share with you the devotionals for this week, the week of November 15th through 19th, 2021. We're going to talk just a little bit about each of the day's devotionals with the overall theme of joy. Um, we, we have begun a series of discussions about the fruit of the Spirit. And last week we looked at love, and this week we're looking at joy. So, um, of course, there's a, there's a lot of things we could talk about with regard to joy. We're going to focus on five of these, uh, these key items that he mentions here in the devotional discussion. Uh, but there's just so much more. You know, there's a real difference between happiness and joy. And, and the way I've always tried to understand it, guys, is um, happiness has a tendency to depend on circumstances, whereas joy is something that can be with us no matter what the circumstances. Is that, does that make sense? Is that, a, is that a pretty good way to distinguish the difference between happiness and joy? Yeah, I think joy is a lot deeper and can include happiness. Sure, but, sure. Uh, but um, certainly uh, happiness doesn't quite explain what joy really is. So yeah, exactly. Okay, so let's just jump right in here with the first one, joy in the good news. And uh, the, the devotional writer points out that uh, uh, Jesus came on the scene with joy. Uh, when, when, the, uh, when the wise men uh, saw him, when the shepherds saw him, the, the whole idea of joy was a very much a part of the birth of Jesus in the flesh. And, and Jesus talked a lot about joy uh, in his kingdom talk. Uh, and this is a passage from Matthew 13, 44. Matthew 13, of course, has a series of kingdom parables. Matthew has a lot of kingdom parables, as a matter of fact. And uh, it says here, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Uh, and of course, I don't think Jesus is advocating here deceptive buying and selling practices per se, uh, but rather he's, he's emphasizing the, the, the joy that's connected with finding the treasure that is in the kingdom, right? Yeah, and that's a, a highlight of, you know, what, what he finds in the field is way more important than what he's found anywhere in his past, and, and certainly that would bring joy. Absolutely. Um, he points out in this devotional that uh, we don't really know the lives of the shepherds or these magi that came to visit Jesus, but um, he points out and, and makes the statement that they could never have lived lives unchanged as though they had not heard about this surpassing joy that was connected with this person, Jesus the Christ. Um, and certainly when we understand who Jesus is and what he came to do, then we ought to be filled with joy. It ought to, uh, it ought to be a company joy, this good news uh, about Jesus and about his kingdom, about what he's all about here on this earth and in the life to come. Um, so he says, uh, the, the takeaway is uh, today I will spend more time thinking about some aspect of Christ's character and how can be more like him in that specific way? Because if Christ is all about joy and bringing joy to our mm -hmm. lives, then that's certainly something that we can uh, we can emulate. Well, uh, Tuesday's devotional is also from the Book of Matthew, and it goes back to the uh, to the so-called Sermon on the Mount and the Beatitudes, and uh, this is where joy takes a little bit different twist uh, than just happiness and benefits and blessings that come to us, because in this context, uh, Jesus has talked about several things that bless us, and then he talks about persecution, and he says, rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Uh, the whole point is we are blessed when we're persecuted, and, and that somehow is a little bit incongruous to us, isn't it? <clears throat> No question about it. Uh, how do you how do you find joy? And certainly in James, you you read about uh, considering something joy. 
uh, and what he what follows that is uh, the difficulties and the hard circumstances. And so um, those two, you wouldn't think go together because again, sometimes we think happiness uh, when we think joy and God means something, uh, Holy Spirit means something a lot deeper uh, than that. Uh, that's how Paul is able to say in the middle of imprisonment, rejoice, right? Or uh, have joy always. Uh, and so um, there's something, something much deeper than giddiness or, uh, or uh, pleasantness um, or all the circumstances lining up well uh, when we talk about joy. Right, and the, the, um, the title of the lesson kind of gives us a clue as to what this whole idea is about when he, he says, uh, joy in the work of grace. Uh, of course, grace is the unmerited favor, the gift that God has given to us in the person of Jesus Christ. And so when we understand that and we know the blessings and benefits that come from being a uh, follower of Jesus Christ, then when we do face persecution, whatever form it might take, then we can have joy because we know that ultimately there is a greater blessing that comes as a result of being a follower of Christ. Um, and, and he reminds them in this passage that, you know, you're not the only ones that have suffered. You're not the only ones that have been persecuted. The prophets of old were persecuted for doing the will of God. So whenever we do the will of God, uh, there, there are going to be some hardships, some difficulties that come about. We can find joy in the journey because of the grace that God has given to us. Um, anything else there about joy in the work of grace? Yeah, so, uh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Blake. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, if you've watched the series, The Chosen, there's a, uh, which is a really good series about, you know, the life of Jesus, of course. Um, but there's a, the way they depict the woman at the well scene with the woman in Samaria and just the joy that, that she experiences in the midst of the grace that, that she um, uh, encounters is really cool. Like, <laughs> how can you, how can you walk away from that conversation rejoicing in the fact that this man has told me everything I've ever done, like pointed out all our all flaws. And I think a large part of that is because the, the grace and um, genuine nature of, of Jesus and that encounter. Um, but later in the next season at the opening, uh, seeing they're still there in Samaria and the apostles are still having trouble with this idea of Jesus talking to the Samar Samaritans and it, uh, they start getting really angry about it. But Jesus kind of lashes out a little bit at the apostles um in the series of course uh where he's like you know they don't they don't deserve this but neither do you right that's that's the part of of what grace is and and that's what we're here to show as uh, to show that we're not worthy but grace is here and we can have joy in that um which of course the the chosen is not the gospel right they take a few liberties sure. but the one they portray that i think is really uh really interesting yeah, a good depiction of what grace is all about, ultimately, isn't it? It's not because someone is different from us, uh, we should uh, begrudge them the opportunity to have grace because, uh, as all of us could say there, but for the grace of God go I. I that's it, the grace is, is available to all of us, and none of us deserves it. That's what grace is all about, like you said. So, uh, Tommy, then the, the next lesson is, is a direct follow-up to this idea of joy in persecution like the people beforehand uh, who lived before the prophets and so forth had, had endured. And it's a quote from James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4, uh, where James, who is uh, the writer of James, is believed to be the half-brother of Jesus uh, from the same family, count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Uh, again, uh, there's something that doesn't quite add up in our minds. Those two things don't seem to go together, joy and trials. And, and certainly I don't want to downplay any trials that we face because we do have heavy burdens to bear. I know, I know a lot of people are dealing with heavy burdens uh, and have been, especially the last couple of years. Uh, but in spite of that, uh, we are admonished and encouraged to consider it joy, to think of these things in terms of joy. And, and why does he say that, that it, these things ought to bring us joy? What, what's the point that he's making here? 
Well, I, I think it's that uh, because none of none of those negative things have any meaning whatsoever in a broken world, unless God is busy doing something with us. And so he, he mentions the testing of faith and the uh, being complete. Uh, God is arming us and, and preparing us and giving us what we need uh, to face the next challenge that comes along even. Uh, and uh, so God is working. God is doing things. That's uh, I'm working on that for a sermon this weekend. So uh, yeah. that, that whole idea is, is really in my thoughts right now. Uh, God, God is at work. Yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, we think about going back to this idea of the fruit of the spirit being joy and fruit. Fruit is a product of a number of processes that come together in order to uh, be able to enjoy uh, the fruit that a tree or a, a vine produces. Uh, and in fact, you think about fruit and produce along the same lines. Uh, Maybe you've seen a fruit stand by the side of the road. Some people call it a fruit stand. Some people would call it a produce stand. Uh, and so I think that's interesting. Your faith, the testing of your faith produces steadfast. There's, there's a product that comes about as a result of that. And yeah, it is a, it is a process, isn't it? And, and you got that sermon series off to a great start. And by the way, if you're watching us and uh, you weren't able to be with us last Sunday, you can go back to our YouTube channel, the Red Bank Church of Christ YouTube channel, and you can pick up that, su that Sunday's lessons, and you can join us live uh, next Sunday as well uh, as this series on uh, trusting in the process of growth that occurs when we're Christians um, uh, as Tommy completes that series in the next couple of weeks. Uh, encourage you to join us. Uh, we'd love for you to do that. So uh, what he's talking about is the immediate circumstances aren't necessarily things that call for joy, but the end result and that whole process that we're going through uh, is something that we ought to rejoice in because of the growth that can take place within us. Uh, <clears throat> then in Thursday's devotional, he uh, looks at the little book of third John verse four, and he quotes John here, the, the, so-called apostle whom Jesus loved. Uh, of course, he loved them all, but uh, that's how John identifies himself. He says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. And the whole idea there is the joy that we have when we see others also embrace these kingdom principles and follow Jesus. And especially if we've had some kind of an influence on them, right? Yeah, definitely. And uh, we live we live in a really competitive world. And that I know uh, in my past, I've, I've been like times I'm like, man, I'm, I'm way too competitive with this. I just need to like step back. Right. And uh, it can even come to the point where we rejoice uh, in other people's failures sometimes, which is really not good. Um, but uh, but yeah, taking the opposite approach of, of truly trying to find joy in um and not only others' success, but also, uh, like you're mentioning too, the joy of, of others um, finding Christ. And uh, yeah, yeah, and, and uh, you know, there is there is some satisfaction that, that comes about with that, and of course, that is something that uh, sort of encapsulates joy a little bit. Uh, this idea of a of a deep-seated affection and, and rejoicing that we can have uh, satisfaction when other people that, that we may have had some influence over. And, and I don't know if John is talking about his literal children. It appears he's not. He's talking about his children in the faith. And uh, Paul talked about his children in the faith, like Timothy and Titus and others. Uh, but, but when people that we have taught and, and influenced and tried to set a good example for when we see them responding in faith to Jesus as well, then that ought to uh, create within us this same kind of joy that John felt. Uh, and of course, sometimes you see that over a longer period of time. Tommy, I know you you were a youth minister here for, uh, what, 15 or more years, and, and you saw some of those young people develop and grow, and now you've seen the fruits of not only your labor, but but their parents' labor and the influence of others as well. And, and there is a sense of satisfaction that comes with that, right? Sure. And it's it, it's a natural joy. I, 
I, li I like the fact that he speaks about children in a spiritual sense there. Yeah. Uh, a lot of those kids were not my biological children. Sure. Uh, sure. But, but you pour and invest and try to have relationship uh, with uh, in a positive way um, people. And so when they respond to God in the way that you're, you're hoping that you've um, invested time in uh, for, for that to be the result, um, pride is not even the right word. It's no. you're filled with that joy too. Right. Uh, of of seeing what God is doing in their lives and uh, what God had promised that he was going to do in their lives. So it's, it's uh, I understand that. I get that biologically speaking with my sure. own kids, uh, sure. certainly with people that you invest in and care about. Uh, it's a similar deal. And that comes about with long-term ministries like uh, you and I have been involved in. Uh, and we see that over generations. And, and Blake, that's something that you will see. And I'm sure you already are seeing, even though you are still relatively young in, in ministry here. Uh, but but that's, a, that's, a great, um, that's a great encouragement to us who are involved in trying to make an impact in the lives of other people. Uh, and, you know, that's not just for people who are in full-time ministry. That's for anyone. That's for parents. That's for Sunday school teachers. That's for anyone that we might have some kind of influence over, no matter what our role in life is and, and uh, what opportunities we may have. Then um, the, the Friday devotional is uh, centered around the idea of joy at the end, uh, the sort of in the final analysis. Uh, and another kingdom parable there in Matthew chapter 25, where uh, it's a parable of the stewards uh, and, and the parable about accountability. And of course, the master gives three of his servants or his stewards uh, sums of money to keep while he goes away for a period of time. And when he comes back, he settles accounts with them and, and checks up and, and they have to give an account to him for how they've used what he's left with them. And two of them uh, had taken his money and had doubled it and one had not. And, and in both of the cases of those who had, had taken his money and used it well, he said, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a little I will set you over much. Enter into the joy of your master. Uh, <clears throat> and there, I believe he's talking about not just the immediate satisfaction that comes with knowing that a job is well done, but, but all of the fruits of the labors uh, and the, the benefits of being uh, one of the master's faithful servants. Uh, uh, it's, it's an all-encompassing thing, this kind of joy. I like the way one translation rendered that. Uh, uh, let's celebrate together is what it says there in that last phrase. Uh, and so this idea of celebration and being grateful for the opportunities that we have been given to use what the master's given us uh, and just the satisfaction and then the joy that comes as a result of that. Um, man, that's, that's pretty deep stuff. And, and uh, that, that is looking at a long-term view rather than just the immediate circumstances that are right before our eyes. Yeah, this is, uh, <clears throat> it just hit me, Steve. You, we're, you and I are always looking for sermon uh, ser series ideas and class ideas and all that. The joy of the master. Uh, you see it in this verse uh, about, about service. Uh, you see it in the story of the prodigal son uh, who says we had to rejoice mm -hmm. because the one who was in relationship to me has come back, come back home. Uh, so, there are probably other examples in scripture there of, of, uh, of God expressing uh, his joy, what causes the joy of the master. Uh, here's one of those things. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think about uh, uh, another occasion where Jesus expressed joy when, when the 70 or 72, depending on the translation, uh, went out and what Jesus had told them, you're going to go and you're going to talk about the kingdom. Some people are going to receive you, some are not. And and uh, you're going to be able to do things for them and bless them. And they come back and they answer to him. And that's one of the few occasions that we see Jesus expressing real joy uh, when they tell him these stories. You can almost envision uh, a setting where they're coming back and they're reporting all these good things that have been happening. And, and this just fills Jesus' heart with joy. So, so yes, uh, there is joy in service. There is joy in faithfulness. Uh, uh, satisfaction that comes about as a result of doing the Father's will. And that's something that we all ought to strive for. So the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, last week, we looked at love. Uh, this week, we're looking at joy. And it's more than just 
dependent on the immediate circumstances because frankly sometimes immediate circumstances that happen to us are difficult and they're they're painful uh and they cause us sorrow which is in one sense the opposite of joy but we can even have joy in those circumstances when our faith and our trust is in following after jesus so uh we thank you so much for joining us today we thank you for following along in these devotionals uh, we hope and pray that the, the few brief moments that we have together to talk about each of them will kind of spur your thinking a little bit and, and encourage you to dig deeper into this. Uh, and, and especially when we talk about things like the fruit of the Spirit. Uh, this is such a rich study, and there's so many things we could talk about. And we've only scratched the surface here. So uh, dig deeper. And uh, if we can help you in that process, please let us know. If we can pray for you or help you in any other way, you can contact us here at the Red Bank Church of Christ uh, via phone or email or through our website, which may be the best way to do that. And uh, let us know what your needs might be, and we'll do our best to respond to those needs. We want to pray with you. We want to pray for you. I've asked Tommy to lead us in prayer here as we as we close. And so uh, let's go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father God, uh, we ask for your joy uh, as we continue to walk in the spirit, we ask that you uh, continue to produce uh, joy in our lives. Uh, Father, thank you for the good news that allowed us to have any kind of relationship with you for the grace that you demonstrate in, in kindness um, in, in Jesus Christ and his saving work on our behalf. Father, we uh, ask you to be with us as we struggle through trials, to put them in the right perspective, uh, to be able to see you working. And Father, uh, uh, we're thankful for all those around us who bring joy uh, in our lives uh, and, and as we see them develop uh, in the spirit, uh, th those characteristics as well, it, it brings us great joy. Father, we look forward to the day when we can uh, stand before you and be accepted by you eternally. And uh, we look forward to that day to, to be a part of what we know will be a joyous occasion, uh, seeing you face to face. Father, thank you for today and bless us in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Guys, thanks. Uh, thanks for helping out today and uh, uh, for your encouraging words and, and input into this discussion. And thank you for joining us. We hope you have a good day and a good rest of the week. God bless.